Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about fire resistant hydraulic fluids on uh, your different mine sites and industrial sites and how that can improve safety and uh, reduce risks on your sites. Um, so today what I'll go over, um, I'll first talk about mineral oil based fluids and greases and uh, the comb combustibility of those products. I'll then get into a fire resistant hydraulic fluid overview and go over the different classes and try to explain the different applications and what they're used for. And uh, along the way, I'll do some fluid and grease demonstrations so that you can uh, see what I'm talking about with that. So to start off with um, hydraulics, it's, it's a type of system that you, you virtually can't go to any industry without seeing. It's, it's transmission and control and generation of power through pressurized fluid. It's been around since ancient times, um, you know, traditionally with water, but in the early 1900s, turned to mineral oil-based products based on <laughs> lubrication that you're going to see with um, oil and also with all the fluid mechanic properties that you get with that. Um, the key here is while mineral oil is cheap and abundant and it's very effective, there are some safety risks and health risks that it uh, proposes when it's on your industrial sites, basically because it's flammable. So this is a mineral oil that's misted out and uh, a flame's put to it. You can see that it sustains the flame as soon as you put to it and it will maintain that flame while there's a fuel source that's going to it. The second video is showing the propagation of a flame where you light at the end and then it transfers back to where the um, fuel source is actually coming out of. So that's where you could have catastrophe if you have a blown hydraulic line and it goes back to a fuel reservoir. So as we discussed, mineral oil fires can lead to um, safety for all your workers on your sites, um, capital losses in the millions, depending on the type of equipment that you have. Say if it's a hydraulic excavator, um, that catches on fire. It's, it's something that can be extremely expensive for your operation while also um, causing production losses and a safety risk. So there's, there's quite a few industries where uh, just to the nature of the industry, whether it's very hot materials that you're working around or a hot environment or in the case of the steel industry with molten metals, um, you're going to have a situation where there's an enhanced fire risk. In those in industries, it's commonplace to use fire resistant hydraulic fluids to try to control those um, fire risks. Some of the different industries listed above, um, power generation with steam turbines, tunnel boring machines, obviously underground mining um, due to combustible uh, coal or whether it's dust, whatever it may be. These are very delicate industries where fire resistant hydraulic fluids should be used or considered. So now I'll talk about the different classifications of uh, fire resistant hydraulic fluids and try to just give an overview of what they are. So there, there are basically four different categories um, and they stand for HF, hydraulic fluid, and then A, B, C, and D. So those are the four different classifications. HFA fluid is going to be a, a regular emulsion. A lot of people call this 95-5 fluid because it's 95% water, 5% oil. Um, the second one is an HFB, which is what's called an invert emulsion. It's the um, opposite of what a regular emulsion is. It's about 40% water and 60% oil. You're actually putting the oil, water into the oil as opposed to the regular emulsion. The HFC is a water glycol type product. Those are about 35 to 45% water content in those. And everything on the left hand side are water based hydraulic fluids. So most of the fire resistance is coming from the water. Um, on the right side, we'll see water-free fluids, and those are synthetic fire-resistant products. Um, there are two different categories there, but both of them are HFD. Um, they're made out of esters that we synthesize in the lab. So the first product I'll get into a little bit more is a um, water-based emulsion. So as I mentioned before, it's 95-5 fluid. That's typically what people refer to it as. In the long wall industry in this area, um, those products have gotten to be about 98% water and 2% oil, so it, it's definitely getting higher water content with it. Um, you can see a little diagram um, below that shows what an emulsion is. It's, it's oil and water. Obviously, oil and water don't like to mix, so when you make the product, you have to use emulsifiers and other chemicals to hold that oil in suspension. So an emulsifier, it's a chain that has a water-loving end and an oil-loving end, and it holds the oil in suspension um, by uh, doing that chemically. These products offer excellent fire resistance because they're 98% water. It's the only product that's actually considered fire resistant and, and it will not catch on fire. Uh, these are very stable, especially um, modern day emulsions. Um, they really don't fall out of suspension as ones 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, 
Some of the other benefits with it, um, stable, non-toxic, uh, non-hazardous. It's completely biodegradable due to the high water content. Operating temperatures are around 40 to 140 degrees. Um, so there's, there's a lot of places for this. And since the high water content, it's very economical. This is used in a lot of systems where a, a high fluid loss is acceptable. So in a metalworking industry, due to the cooling properties, um, it's used there. It's also used in a long wall fluid underground. So if you've been underground on a long wall, there's gonna be tons of hydraulic leaks everywhere. Um, this makes it a little bit easier without um, really having a cost impact. Some of the issues with the product itself, um, it, it is mostly water, so it can only be used in certain applications because the load cannot be what it would with a mineral oil-based product. Also, um, you have certain issues with the high water content that you have involved with it. There's an extended corrosion risk um, over long term compared to mineral oil, as well as some of the characteristics that you would get out of a mineral oil-based hydraulic fluid that it just inherently does not have. The other one is bacteria and fungus. So due to the water quality, you can end up having bacteria and fungus that has to be controlled with a lot of chemicals that are inherently um, in our emulsions, as well as uh, making sure the pH is um, a, certain, um, a certain level, usually above eight, eight and a half. The, the second um, category I'll talk about is an invert emulsion. As mentioned earlier, it's about 40% water into 60% oil, the exact opposite of the diagram I showed you earlier. So it would be water inside of a, an oil mixture. Uh, this is probably the lowest used fire resistant hydraulic fluid. Um, in the olden days, they would call it mouse milk. And, and a lot of people use it in underground situations in place of a fire resistant, or in, in place of a mineral oil based hydraulic fluid. Um, these products are very stable. Uh, the water content needs to be around 35 to 45 percent. If it goes under 35 percent, you're going to have um, a really good hydraulic fluid, but the fire resistant characteristics are much lower because it has lower water. If you end up going above 45 percent with the water, you have great fire resistant properties, but the hydraulic performance and anaware characteristics are lower just because of the mineral oil that you don't have it anymore. It's very similar to the other emulsions and the operating temperatures. Um, if it does start to evaporate out, that's when you'd see better hydraulic performance, but lower fire resistance, which is what you're really trying to, to get at with this. Um, some of the issues with this can be foaming and um, reduction in viscosity, as well as it, it can hold more contaminants than um, other types of products. So you have to really monitor it, filter it, and make sure it's, it's working well for you. The third um, that I'll talk about is HFC water glycols. And as the name would suggest, it's water in it and also a glycol or an ethylene glycol and, and different uh, other chemicals that are put into it to get the proper viscosity is that what you would need. Um, this makes up about half of the fire resistant market in total um, just because it has a very low temperature that it can go, can go to. It makes it ideal for um, antifreeze applications. So in this area for long wall shields underground, our storage fluid, would be um, a, a water glycol. Um, the problem with the product though, it does not have the same hydraulic um, performance as a mineral oil based product. So it can only be used in certain applications, especially in this area. Um, whereas it, it can be used in the steel industry, die casting, um, but in a situation where you're antifreezing long wall shields for the winter, that's where you would normally see it in this area. And the last one I'll talk about, this is really where I wanted to spend most of my time today is the HFD products. This is the only one that does not contain any water and it's a synthetic ester-based product. Um, there's two main categories that I'll talk about, phosphate esters and polyol esters and, and I'll go over that on the next slide with some of the pros and cons with those. These are a direct plug and place for any other sort of mineral oil based hydraulic fluid. You can get it any ISO grade that you want. Um, the benefits, they're extremely fire resistant, um, it's biodegradable, and it has those same properties that you would have with the mineral oil based hydraulic fluid. It can also be used with the, the same elastomers as you would so you don't have an issue with seals or anything of that nature. Uh, the, the most used industries that you would see this in is the steel industry where you have fires every day, but the biggest thing is trying to control those fires and make sure it doesn't propagate back to a source and burn down a, a steel plant. And also tunneling industry, it would be big for that um, due to some environmental areas where, environmentally sensitive areas where you're using and tunneling equipment because it is biodegradable as mentioned. So this shows the polyol product. Um, it can ignite, but it self extinguishes itself. 
and then it also doesn't propagate the flame. So you can see where it will not ignite as you're moving towards the source and then self-extinguishing with it. Here's a direct comparison between the two um, just to show the difference, and it, it is stark. So if um, you had any sort of hydraulic leak and it lands on a manifold that's hot or anything of that nature, it would extinguish itself. So the two main types of synthetic fire resistant fluids I want to talk about are phosphate esters or polyol esters. Um, a phosphate ester is, is an older technology. It's, the biggest advantage with a phosphate ester is that it can go to a higher temperature than what the polyol esters can. It's not, a, it's not a huge difference, but 20 degrees Celsius or so, and in certain industries, um, like for power plants and steam turbines, that may be enough um, to, to make a difference for them. Um, some of the issues with it, though, it, it is about 10 to 15 times more expensive than mineral oil-based products. So it's a very expensive product. Also, when it combusts, it creates a, a white um, a gas or a cloud. Um, if you've seen this underground in, in couplings um, used in, in long walls and, and whatnot, if a plug blows on that and lands on the ground, a, a white uh, cloud will come from that, and it can make you sick. It's, it's a noxious gas. So that would be the downside with it, as well as some of the raw materials used to make it um, are not very friendly to people or, or the environment. So it, it has a place, but it um, definitely has some disadvantages with it. Um, the good thing about a synthetic polyol ester, um, it is extremely fire resistant. It's real, it, a pro and a con, it is relatively low expensive when you're comparing it to a phosphate ester. If you're um, comparing it to a mineral oil, it's about twice the price. So that's, that's really the only con with using a product like that. But it does have the same anti-wear product uh, properties as well as um, mechanical properties as a mineral oil would, um, so you can plug it in place. And in this area, MSHA also certifies it for its use underground, so you can replace certain fire suppression systems underground um, rather than adding uh, a system in. And the last uh, one I did mention, biodegradable and non-toxic. So in environmentally sensitive areas, then um, that's a, a definitely a key point. So here is a, a chart that's showing some of the different temperatures that I talked about and what you would reach. Um, with a fire point, um, that point where the vapor's coming off of the fluid, where it can sustain a flame. So that's what we call the fire point. And then the auto ignition point, where it heats up to a specific point and it'll combust without a, a flame or a spark. Uh, to create that fire. Um, so the difference between mineral oil and the, the polyol ester is about 250 Celsius to 365, and then uh, 300 degrees Celsius to 465 Celsius, respectively. And where the phosphate esters would come in, it, it would add probably another 20, 25 degrees onto the auto ignition point um, on that side of it. So here are a few different charts to try to um, show the difference in all these fire resistant fluids and different key characteristics. Um, the first slide would be on fire resistance. As you can imagine, the higher water content that you have in a product, you're going to have more fire resistance because water wouldn't burn. So the, the HFA fluids, the 95.5 or if it's 98.2, those would be at the top of the pyramid um, being completely fire resistant. The other water-based products as you go down, um, they're going to have less fire resistance just because they have less water in it, which the H with, the, with the HFDU product being still in the good area, not as low as um, mineral oil that will catch on fire as you've seen from the videos. Hydraulic performance, as you'd imagine, uh, mineral oil is at the very top of it, along with the HFDU, which is polyol ester and the HFDR, which is phosphate ester. Um, all of those um, are right on the top of the pyramid with hydraulic performance. As you go higher with water content, it does get lower in hydraulic performance, and that's why you can only use those in certain applications. And then the last environmental performance. Um, as you'd imagine, higher water content is going to be more environmentally friendly. The surprising one is the HFDU, the polyol ester, because it is um, neck and neck with uh, environmental performance because it's biodegradable mineral oil being on the bottom because it's not biodegradable, so it will not be earth friendly. Here's a snapshot of uh, the three of those charts together, um, just showing the polyol, uh, just to show that it is in the, in the, good, um, the good zone for all of those indices. Uh, the last chart that I'll show you is just, uh, it's a snapshot of all the different com characteristics and with which each of the products, pluses being uh, pros for it, minuses being negative for it. In the interest of time, we'll just look on the outer columns um, for mineral oil and uh, the HFDU type product, the polyol ester. 
Um, as you'd imagine, the thermal stability, maintenance, component life, everything really ticks the box with the mineral oil-based hydraulic fluid. That's why they are the most used in the world. Really, the only negatives are it is not fire resistant and it's also not biodegradable. So certain uh, applications, it can be difficult. On the right side, you have the HFDU. It really does tick all the boxes. The only way, place where there is a negative with it, it is more expensive than a regular mineral oil product. So that's usually only the pushback that we, um, we see with that product. So to summarize, while mineral oil is inexpensive and it's very abundant and it has great characteristics, there are certain issues that you get with it with fire resistance and environmental properties. Um, so depending on your situation, it, it may not be the best um, option for you. Um, fire resistant hydraulic fluids, you can use those in certain applications without sacrificing hydraulic fluid performance um, and uh, you can increase the safety on your site at the same time. So with that, I'll Thank you for coming and ask any questions. Quaker, it's what's inside.